Yachik, so good of you to come by to talk to us about Philip Morris International. You know, when people think of Philip Morris, they think Marlboro cigarettes. Uh, but what they may not know is you're now expanding into wellness and health products. Tell us why you decided to move in this direction. Well, we have been uh, building um, capabilities inside the company for the last decade or more, actually. Well, we've been very focused on uh, developing uh, products which are much safer to use than, uh, than as regular cigarettes, the famous Marlboro. And uh, we also realized that we have built a very unique set of assets inside the company which we can repurpose for our purposes. And it happened that this is in the territory of wellness and healthcare, which I admit is not uh, the first thing which will you know, cross anybody's mind that the tobacco company can go as far as, as into the wellness and health care. Yeah, it, it does seem like an odd fit that a cigarette and tobacco company would get into health and wellness. Yes, but if you think more into, we zoom more into the details, in order to develop the safer products to cigarettes, we had to really master the inhalation, okay? How smoke is delivered to the human lungs, how the aerosol is delivered to human lungs. And we actually built quite a lot of knowledge how the human respiratory system works. So this is how that knowledge about the human respiratory system, I believe, will serve us very well in developing uh, the, the new product. Mm -hmm. You've already made several small acquisitions that specialize in inhalation and respiratory medicines. And you said that you plan to invest $200 million a year uh, to develop a whole pipeline of health and wellness products. How big do you want this health push to be? Well, our aspirational target is uh, that by 2025, we will achieve a $1 billion from the revenues from the sales of this product. Uh, for me, it's not really that important that $1 billion in 2025, but we, we put a few products into the commercializations. We prove that we have a capability. And, you know, in a business, once you achieve your first billion dollars, then you have a two billion dollars, four billion dollars, eight billion dollars, and you continue to grow. Well, let's put a little bit in perspective because Philip Morris's revenues are over 31 billion dollars. And most of that comes from your cigarette side of the business. How big do you think that the number will be five, ten years from now? Well, it can be very big. Um, seven years ago, when we started our smoke free, part of the business as a replacement uh, to cigarettes, we had literally zero dollars of revenue. And I fast forward seven years later, 30% of my total 30 billion is already generated by smoke free products. Mm -hmm. So it's always important to have a courage to start. The earlier you start, the earlier I believe you will come to, to harvest the results. It can be a very big business for PMI. Jacek, you've acknowledged that there's been criticism from medical societies about these acquisitions that you've made so far, and you haven't been happy about it. Uh, tell us what bothers you. There is a bit of a debate in some circles that, you know, co tobacco companies of Philip Morris shouldn't have a license to operate in a domain of the wellness and healthcare. Um, but actually, we're doing this for the well-defined purpose. We really want to leave our cigarettes behind us. We want to solve the problem of smoking, hence the whole uh, array of the products we're developing as the alternative to cigarettes. But we also we believe we can push the company into completely new territory when we will have a net positive contribution to the society. The fact that I have a history of cigarettes, which, by the way, we acknowledge that we want to stop selling cigarettes, that we want to go away from the combustible products, as we know it, go to the safer alternatives. We're actually trying to remedy the situations. And the fact that, you know, if medical community is going to the patients and telling them that if the product is coming from the tobacco manufacturer, then you shouldn't use the product. I mean, there are people suffering, there are people who need the solutions. I don't think it's actually moral. The medical community also has been very troubled by Philip Morris's recent hire of a scientist and top regulator from the FDA, the Federal Drug Administration, and they see it as a conflict of interest. How do you see that? No, it's not really a conflict of interest. It's actually, you know, these are the people who have spent uh, quite a big part of their career, of their life in uh, pursuing the tobacco harm reductions, in uh, trying to contribute to the problem of smoking. And I'm actually very pleased that the former FDA uh, employees um, perceive Philip Morris as the company which can 
contribute into further advancements of achieving this objective. So I don't think it's a conflict of interest. It's actually parties who are thinking alike, alike who truly wants to solve the problem of smoking and just joining forces. What kind of feedback are you getting from your own industry, from other cigarette manufacturers? Are they supporting you? Not as much as one could think, but I think the industry from a very monolithic you know, type of an industry focused only on cigarettes is going through the challenge of going smoke free. And also, you know, each of us in the industry is trying to start thinking more ahead of uh, ahead of the times and you know see what else these companies can be standing for. But uh, I, well, let's make it very clear, none of us likes change. Okay, so we're always confronted with a change. Usually at the beginning we all go through the stage of denial, then we start building a knowledge, then we're getting more comfortable. From a business perspective, who runs faster presumably wins the most, and that's what PMI is uh, playing today. But you know, I don't have any hard feelings that the people, you know, industry members seven years ago were all, were all against us. And it's mm -hmm. pretty normal human behavior. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you think it'll take for Philip Morris to win credibility in healthcare, and not just from the medical world, but from the public as well? By delivering the products, by you know, proving to people that we walk the talk, that this is not the window dressing. These are the significant efforts, human and capital allocation-wise which we uh, devoting to the strategy. And I believe the success will be the best proof that we were right and this was the good for the society, for investors, for employees of the company. Mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about your campaign to help smokers to stop smoking. You've just come out with a new ad campaign and the headline really gets your attention. Does the world want 1.1 billion people to stop smoking or not? It sounds like a call to action. It is. It's a little bit provocative and essentially I'm asking everyone who uh, can support, uh, uh, can contribute to sit together and uh, design the world without the cigarettes. And I've said it on a number of occasions, not more than a 10 years country by country, we can leave the smoking behind us. But we need to all act together rather than still pretend that the solutions do not exist, or science doesn't exist, etc. Mm -hmm. Well, you're here in New York uh, to promote more support, and UN uh, General Assembly is meeting, so it's an opportunity of a lot of influential people who are here, and you're reaching out to uh, policymakers, regulators, public health advocates, tobacco companies, uh, to unite about bringing about the end of. Uh, cigarette smoking, what are you expecting the reaction to be? Well, I do expect that we'll have at least the conversations, that we'll listen to each other, but I believe the time is coming now when we should really reflect of, again of this great vast opportunity which was never in front of us, uh, which uh, can change the world, at least the world for these one billion people who otherwise will continue smoking mm -hmm. cigarettes. And uh, I think the solutions exist to this. And, the joint will of all stakeholders really can, can make the miracle. Well, you say in the ad, quote, my company is doing its part, now we need others to step up too. You said a moment ago that you know that cigarettes are not good for health, that you ultimately want to remove cigarettes. What are you waiting for? Well, if we do it just unilaterally as Philip Morris, I don't think the problem is going to be solved. I mean, you have another players in the industry, you have all the illicit trade, the risk of illicit trade, etc. But I think we can orchestrate the change and the world has seen a similar transformations in other product categories. Maybe the next step for Philip Morris is to do the healthy thing, which is to actually stop manufacturing cigarettes. And we are ready to do so. We are ready to do so, but we have to do it in a way which is well designed and well uh, orchestrated, if you like. You know, uh, it, this is a very challenging situation to get this kind of change that you're dealing with. What do you think you have to do as the CEO of one of the largest cigarette companies in the world? What do you have to do to really lead the way? Continue with what we're doing. I think the progress and the number of uh, internal, external resources which we have put around this vision, this, uh, this strategy, I think we just have to continue work hard every day, every week, every month, and the rewards will come there. They will achieve our, our, our success.